Hey, how's it going? It's your boy Challenger Coach Adam Warrior the Isles here to bring you the 10.6 low low tier list. Before we start, I wanted to briefly mention that I personally went through our champion pages to fix the accuracy of the builds. Now the fun part is I'll be running a promotion for this patch where if you can find and prove that any builds are off or have better versions, then you may choose a prize of either getting a free profile review or have the build named after you for a patch. To claim your prize, you either gotta join the Mobile X Discord, which will be linked below and message me directly, or drop by the Mobile X Twitch channel on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday late afternoon PSD. But with that out of the way, let's jump right into the tier list. In the top lane, our starting S tier roster will be Garen, Darius, Mordekaiser, Set, Fiora, and Kled. For our changes to the list this time around, we got Teemo moving in from B tier to A tier as his ability to bully out Juggernauts is becoming a bit more valuable, while Jax is doing a lot worse at lower levels of play due to his weaker laning phase and even with a lot of build innovations lately for him, it's just not working. If you're curious about the Garen still being an S tier post nerfs, it's because, well, he has an equally viable build of going Black Cleaver second over the crit, which, you know, is the same win rate, so the champion is barely impacted by this, while Darius, his mana increases are, you know, barely negligible as he's gonna kill you one E anyways. For more important changes, we got Admiral Kled moving in from A tier to S tier. Kled has been falling behind the meta a bit until the buff deter plates and Titanic Hydra kicked in which allowed him to really snowball in the early game while maintaining his carry potential during the mid game. And in case you forgot, he's also got that disgusting 60% Grievous wounds when his Q actually pulls someone which is a big deal in top lane as it allows him to win trades versus the other conqueror abusers as well as champions who rely on healing to extend trades like Darius or Vladimir. The only real downside to picking up Kled in the current meta is how he's hard countered by Fiora, but you know, that's what your one ban is for anyways. And once she's out of the way, you can collect your LP versus pretty much any other top lane champion, including abominations like Set or things like AA Trucks. We also happen to move my boy Kyle up from B tier to A tier this patch as a nice counter to the large amount of melee champions. Tired of losing top lane to Juggernauts who just run at you like Mordekaiser Garen or especially Set? Maybe not a fan of dying 100-0 to tanks like Orn or Maokai? Well, if you need a counter to these champions, Kale can do it. Now, I'll be honest, she will still struggle pre-6 versus those matchups, but once you get that ranged auto attack at level 6, she becomes extremely strong versus them and is even considered one of the only counter picks to set in competitive play. The reason she does so well right now is, well, you know, tanks are common who don't have a lot of damage to kill her, and Juggernauts are also super common in the top lane who don't have the mobility or range to punish her which allows her to safely scale until two or three items at which point she just takes over the game both in team fights and split push. The Urgotten one will be the last change to the top lane list as we are moving him from B tier to A tier thanks to the buffs that he received this patch. Small CC duration increases like these are often scoffed at by the community but I will always remember the day Ali's cocoon duration was increased by 0.35 on patch 5.14 and her win rate went up by around 3%, making her a broken tier jungler. And I promise myself that never again will I make fun of that kind of buff. What this means for Urgot though, is that he is more consistently able to get his W damage off or combo into his R, which should let him bully melee champions a bit easier. And when you combine them with the changes to Death Dance, he'll be incredibly hard to kill. It's one of his core items, and yes, he will do a little less damage as it has less AD, but because he's got a shield, the extra resistances become so much more useful, and so we believe that he will make a small comeback into the meta. In the jungle, our starting S tier roster will be Master Yi, Trundle, Amumu, Zack, Warwick, and Shivana. For the changes to the list, we have Graze moving from B tier to A tier as he's been performing a lot better recently, even able to carry Tarzan to rake one on NA and is quite versatile with a bruiser build or his one shot Dark Harvest lethality setup. Echo, at least in lower elo, is doing worse comparatively to the other S tier champions who are pretty monstrous in win rate and play rate so we moved him down to A tier for now until some of them are nerfed. Jax Jungle did okay for a patch after the overbuff Cinder Hall came in, but then people remembered he kinda sucks, and even the Bruiser item buffs were not enough to keep him in A tier, so we moved him down to B tier. Speaking of B tier champions, Hecarim received buffs to his engaged potential in his R this patch. The Clip Clop champion is doing a lot better in low elo as of late, and with the CC duration increase, his ability to duel or engage fights on immobile carries who lost their flash is gonna be a lot better. Not to mention, he is a potential user of the new Death Dance, which could give him a little extra carry potential as he does pretty decently with AD. This is why his Warrior build is doing better in terms of win rate compared to his Cinderhawk one, which you know is still viable, but if you're picking Hecarim to be a tank, then I kinda feel like you threw a champ select anyways and should've picked any of the viable tank options in S tier or A tier, there's so many of them to choose from, or you could've just picked Warwick and won anyways. Actually, now that I mentioned Warwick, let's talk about an actually overpowered jungler for low elo right now, and yeah, that's Warwick. 
If I were to recommend a single champion to easily hit gold or plat with, Warwick would have been my recommendation before you even finished your sentence, as he provides everything you want for a low yellow jungler. He's got the dueling, he's got the 1v2, he's got the CC, he's pretty tanky, easy clear speed, can solo objectives because your Ezreal wants to push out one more wave and then he misses 4 out of 6 minions anyways, and most importantly, he can run down low HP targets who overstay. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, I played one game before writing the script and ran into a Warwick with the new Death Dance who I think took 10 rotations of my TF combo and didn't die, so yeah, I would definitely try that item on him, it seems amazing. That means that our last change to the jungle list will be Kindred moving into B tier thanks to the buffs that she received to her AD and W healing making her early game a lot easier to manage. It's no secret that Kindred kinda sucked with the 47% win rate in low elo for most of the season, but with some new itemization innovations from the Kindred community as well as the buffs, she should probably make a comeback on this patch. She's got a couple of different setups at the moment, but the one that works the most consistently for carrying is actually Stormraiser crit variant. Outside of that one, she's got her Black Cleaver Zeal Bruiser style or her Bloodraiser Bork for shredding tanks. Got a lot of options, but even then, she's got an interesting one with Mana Mune that a lot of Kindred one tricks in NA have been testing out with some good success that you could have some fun trying out. But when in doubt on what you should take, just stick with the standard setup suggested here. But if you want to see the other one, shameless plug, check out Kindred's champion page at mobilex.gg. Moving down to the mid lane, our starting S tier roster will be Diana, Fizz, Echo, and Katarina. There will be no changes to S tier this time around, but we do have Xerath being added to B tier thanks to his buffs, while Zillion and Mordekaiser are being dropped from A tier to B tier as they're just mostly counter picks in this meta while having super low play rates, though I will advocate that Zillion is a sleeper OP champion in competitive play and no one can tell me otherwise. Our other changes include moving Vagar, Vigar, Vigar? I, I don't know how to pronounce him, from B tier to A tier as the buffs he received to his AD as well as the base damage to his Q should help him stabilize his early game. I've actually played him over the years because, you know, I'm an Opto wannabe, but due to his terrible auto attack animation or missing his Q last hit by like 5 HP not getting my stacks, so I'm not gonna lie, I get a little frustrated at missing that CS and that's because he's a champion who pretty much has to have perfect last hit so he can impact the game quicker due to his terrible early game. These buffs might seem minor, but they should help him scale a little faster and a little more consistently, which is amazing for a champion who is so good versus dive comps or melee champions. And you know, he's got the cage where he just traps the animals like Garen Mains inside. So good for team fighting. Okay, okay. In terms of builds, he's got about three main ones. One is the Spellbook one, which isn't too popular. I don't recommend it. The other is the Glacial GLP setup, which is really good for easily landing stuns and extra utility, but in low elo, Dopa prefers the Comet to carry, so feel free to try out either setup and see which one you like better. Speaking of Dopa, Twisted Fate, my favorite champion, is returning to the tier list in B tier thanks to the buffs that he received to his blue card and red card AP ratio. I actually couldn't help trying this out for myself before making this video, and let me tell you, the buff feels really noticeable. On 5 items, I had a Gromp for 2.8k damage on a blue card, so, you know, after seeing that, I strolled over, ulted to a Jin who was farming at around 70-80% to 80 HP, hit him with the blue card salute, and it actually one-shot him, I just couldn't help laughing. Even during the split pushing game, I felt like I was just killing towers so much faster. This buff really gave TF a lot of options in the late game, and I'm really happy about it because it felt like his late game was a little lackluster in this meta. In terms of item builds and setups, he's got a lot of different ones, but I'm going to suggest the one I think is best for carrying in low elo, and it's the AP Ignite Electric Cube Burst version, which goes well with the AP ratio buffs this patch. Our last change to the mid lane list will be moving Talon from B tier to A tier. Now, normally, despite how well he does in high elo, AD assassins like Talon or even Rengar don't do well in low elo unless you're smurfing because they require you to snowball and end the game really quickly before they end their late away by trying to dive the backline 1v5 in a teamfight. But this doesn't appear to matter as snowballing side lanes is such a valuable asset or even snowballing the jungler with how strong the S tier top laner or ADCs are at carrying teamfights that as long as Talon gets his roams off, which, you know, let's be real here, he definitely will, because no matter how many times you ping or type in chat, they will never save your top laner from engaging a fight right before he shows up, which will allow the enemy Darius to get out of control and then win the upcoming dragon fight for the Talon because he didn't do anything. Not salty about that happening to me recently or anything, it's, you know, just an example I pulled out of thin air. For the bot lane S tier roster, we've got Jinx, Misfortune, Jin, Kaelin, Ash, and Vayne. For the bot lane changes, we have Ash going to S tier as one of the most consistent AD carries that bring value to a team. Other than that, we have Aphelios moving from A tier to B tier as his multiple nerfs not just in a row but on this patch are going to be too much for him to handle in a bracket where he already didn't do too well in terms of win rate. 
That means that our first highlight will actually be Ezreal. It always pains me a little bit to suggest this champion, but he is truly doing well at the moment, along with Lucian, who might be the only two self-sufficient marksmen in the entire game, as Ezreal can lane pretty much 1v2 and be fine. Same thing in teamfights. He can kite easily on his own and doesn't really need anyone else to do anything for him. And even if he gets knocked out of the teamfight, he can still use his ultimate to snipe away some free kills throughout the game. Whether you go Conqueror or Lethal Tempo really doesn't matter too much in terms of the stats, although Lethal Tempo's win rate continues to increase, the big thing you're gonna need to remember about playing Ezreal is that Triforce good, Frozen Fist bad. The numbers on this are so in favor of Trinity Force, Iceborne Gauntlet should probably removed from his shop. But man, does it ever feel good to have that Muramana and Trinity Force power spike, as you can outduel almost any champion in the mid game if you hit your spells. If you can't hit your spells, well, uh, I, I don't know, just don't die because you're the safest AD carry in the game, poke from max range with your Q, and then pretend you did something when you notice you're still at the top of the damage charts after the game, win or lose. And since there aren't a lot of changes to the list this time around, I thought I would highlight some interesting mage options that have shown up in B tier, and those are Swain and Vagar. Vagar has been pretty decent as a bot laner, but his buffs should make it easier for him to farm in the dual lane, so expect to see him a little bit more. Now Swain, on the other hand, is way less popular than even Vagar, but has some crazy good numbers. You know the reasons why he's good as a support in the duo lane? You know the whole thing where it's easier for him to land his E or use his passive while his ult becomes even more effective since there's more people? Well that's also true as a bot laner, in fact it's even more common for supports to have CC to help him set up his abilities. It plays out pretty much the same as what a Swain support would play out in bot lane, but it's actually really good in Luilo because you'll get a bunch of farm to carry the game, so if you like mage bot laners, try out either one, but I'm a big supporter of the Swain bot. Next up we got Senna who received a nerf this patch and it's intended to nerf her fasting harass only Senna style as well as nerf the support role. These nerfs are actually pretty significant for both those styles of Senna, so you would think that the AD carry Senna might move down in our list, but nope, and that's because her normal Muramana style where she actually had to last it is still pretty good. In fact, the normal AD carry build for Senna was still doing pretty good, it's just that the fasting Senna strat was so overwhelmingly strong that there was no reason to use it. And in fact, it was kind of funny because the stat sites were collecting data incorrectly because they were thinking that fasting Senna was actually support Senna, and so it was actually really difficult to tell in terms of stats if AD carry Senna was still doing well because, well, stat sites were just incorrectly collecting the data. That's why you might have noticed weird stuff like Tom Kench being the highest rated AD carry in the whole game, and you know, <laughs> it's just a little funny for a little bit. But now that this strat is nerfed, it'll hopefully return to her previous setup where it's easier to deal with in terms of balance. And lastly, our support S tier roster will be Janna, Blitzcrank, Leona, Sona, Nautilus, and Nami. For the support changes, we have Nala's moving from A tier to S tier, rejoining Leona as the engaged power couple on the Rift. Zeras, thanks to his buffs, will move into B tier as a viable mage support option, but Senna, due to the nerfs to her miss scaling and ability to gain stacks, will drop from S tier to A tier, which you know was done to both nerf her as a support and the harass only Senna bot style, which was really annoying to play against. Sheikah, with the increase in enchanter supports along with a small nerf, is doing worse in the support role, so we dropped him from A tier to B tier. Don't worry, he can still be used as a counterpick to Nala to Leona, just, you know, don't go around blind picking him, it's not gonna go very well for you. Speaking of enchanter picks, we got Sona moving from A tier to S tier in the Loyola list. What did I tell you last time? Whenever they buff her movement speed, this champion's win rate just gets out of control, which it's roughly at 54% win rate right now, but it's got a low play rate of around 3-4%, so we held off on moving her to S tier until this point, especially because she is still vulnerable in lane to engage champions or being camped by the jungler. It's just that if the game lasts too long, which is more common in low elo, or she gets out of the laning phase without feeding, then her team fighting and scaling presence is really powerful, and since she happens to be a counter to any other enchanter support because of that, she does have a bit of an easier time in this meta. Now for her build, the one we showed you here is her standard setup, but if you happen to get a bunch of kills early while you were quote unquote helping secure them, then you can opt to build AP items like Lich Bane to help carry because she does do a lot of damage with high AP. Another enchanter that is moving up the list is Soraka from B tier to A tier thanks to the buffs she received to her Q heal and movement speed which should allow her to actually not die often during the laning phase or you know at least not as often. One of the biggest drawbacks that happened when top lane Soraka was nerfed was that the kiting that they took away from her also impacted her ability to survive all ins or ganks in the ball lane which is also a long lane. Now with some of that laning power back, combined with her now better teamfight phase, Soraka should make a slight comeback as either an A tier pick or minimum B+. That means you'll want to check back for the update video to see where she lands, but I'm pretty certain that this buff will help her out quite a bit. Our last change to the patch will be moving Morgana from B tier to A tier. 
The support meta right now is mostly about a fight between engaged supports trying to kill enchanters while enchanters try their best not to feed and then outscale. Morgana is a bit of a special case as she loses to the other enchanters but beats the engaged supports and now this strength is going to be amplified by the buff that she received this patch as it will be harder to break her black shield in the early game while the extra movement speed is useful for a bunch of stuff. You got things like dodging hooks, getting in range for your R, getting in range to actually hit your Q, and also walking back from base after your AD carry died due to wasting their flash because they didn't trust you to use black shield for them, which you know is just the usual Morgana stuff. It's also not a coincidence she's moving up as both Nautilus and Leona have regained their play rates after their small nerfs. That's it folks, thanks for watching our 10.6 low low tier list, but be sure to check out our other content on this channel as well as at mobileace.gg. As always, I'm the Napoleon of League of Legends, Adam Moriarty Isles, may the old and new solo queue gods be with you.